Well, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm very grateful to be able to uh, be given the chance to speak to you all this morning. Um, and uh, I'd just like to take a, a few minutes just really just to speak about my last 18 months in higher education um, in the UK uh, and how um, I certainly survived it. But um, and we question whether the thriving uh, is actually uh, is actually the true or not by the end. And hopefully we'll be able to investigate that. So how did I get through the last 18 months um, in, through in higher education in my role there? Um, in the UK. Well, uh, I had plenty of alcohol um, hand gel. Uh, I used lots and lots of masks. Uh, and then finally, my, my third piece of my cop toolkit was um, was the, well, it's not just LT, but certainly the, the support and advice from, uh, from ADI. So I thought I'd kick off uh, with actually a holiday snap, um, which is a bit of a, a strange place to start uh, with any kind of scientific talk. Um, but this was um, this is a photo that is that was taken um, on uh, Saturday, the 14th of March 2020. And I had gone away for what was supposed to be a romantic weekend uh, in a beautiful part of the UK known as the New Forest. It's beautiful because it's so stark. Um, and this is one of the photos that I took that day. Um, it had been raining, um, it had been cold, it had been windy, and I was a little bit miserable uh, that, it was, um, that, it was, that it was like that, but I guess I should have expected it from the New Forest. Anyway, I'm getting ready to get, uh, my, my, my other half is getting ready to go for dinner, and I do the um, stupid thing of checking my work emails, and I open an email from the Vice Chancellor to all staff and all students to say that um, she's taken the decision to cancel all face-to-face -face teaching with immediate effect. So, of course that ruined my dinner but it also ruined the rest of the weekend because my head is now spinning with what on earth um, does this mean what are the implications for this for me um, and as everybody in higher education we have more than one hat um, so i'm a lecturer i'm thinking i've got a couple of lectures left what's the implication of that for me well i can probably move my lectures online there's not a big issue with that um, although I've never talked directly online before and certainly not live online, um, I felt that that was something that I could overcome. I'm a personal tutor, so I have a lot of tutees, 40 tutees that maybe at any one time might be concerned about what's happening um, with the announcement and of course their own personal safety. I'm a module lead and fortunately my physiology modules are in the first term so I can not have to worry there. But I'm a program director so I look after all of the suite of biology degree programs and so there are lots of implications there for the staff that deliver lectures and modules for me on the program. So I'm starting to get a little bit concerned. But another role that I have is that I'm the um, part of the school senior management team so I am um, responsible for under normal circumstances, the strategy um, of the academic profile. So what are we going to be delivering next? How will we deliver it in the future? And that moved very quickly from strategy uh, to operation. How many lectures did we have left? How many labs did we have left? Um, how are we going to deliver these? And that was not just for, for physiology and for science, but right across the school and the wider faculty as well. I'm also a mentor to new staff and I'll come back and, and speak about that in the next slide but I've got I've got staff members that have recently joined us underneath me that are obviously also concerned about the implications of this and then more broadly and, and everybody will have felt this you know are their family safe uh, am I safe and so we've got lots of different um, things that are spinning around my head and I'm sure that you um, that you can obviously relate um, whatever whatever industry you're in whether you're in higher education or not and wherever you were in the world at the time so um, it's now uh, Monday the 15th of March um, and my mentee who'd started just two weeks prior on the 2nd of March um, who had been given the task of delivering a pharmacology lab uh, on Tuesday the 16th of March to 60 foundation year students comes to me and says I have this headache and I don't know what to do I don't know how to solve this. Now Sarah is absolutely fantastic but it's her first teaching post and I can imagine that um, starting and I remember starting uh, in higher education is scary enough but to be um, faced with a pandemic in directly in front of you and to be told that you still need to deliver something that you can't deliver the way that maybe you'd planned for the last two weeks uh, was incredibly daunting for her. So she comes to me saying what can we do? Now we've got Easter on our doorstep and in the UK um, Easter well, certainly in my institution, at least, um, the, the, the university doesn't stop for very long, but it does have a four week, uh, sorry, four day window. So the weekend and the Monday um, and, the, and the Friday, either side of that. So we can't push back labs too far in the hope that there'll be an announcement um, from the vice chancellor or indeed the government that we can return 
um, to teaching anytime soon. So we don't really want to do that. We don't want to layer that. There's a, um, an assessment attached to this lab. Uh, so we can't just cancel it altogether, but we can, um, we can do something else. And so what we do is decide to do is we push the lab back one week. We have a second lab that's due to take place, um, which will then become the week after. So we've got two labs that we need to design in very quick succession and we have to deliver them online. Now, to make things that extra bit complicated, we've inherited this module from a, um, a relationship that the university had with another organisation. And um, unfortunately, it was quite poorly designed in that we're trying to teach applied pharmacology to um, students that are just learning or have just previously learned about chemistry and about basic biology. And so trying to explain applied pharmacology to these students is going to be difficult enough. It's also the first and only time that we're going to be delivering these labs. So we don't want to sink a large amount of resource into this. We don't have a lot of time to do so either. So how are we going to do this? And at the time in the UK, we had a lot of this on our screens. Um, this, uh, this is Boris Johnson and he's the Prime Minister and he was making um, daily uh, addresses to the UK uh, with the slogan, stay home, protect the NHS and save lives. And I think at this point, um, on the Monday, we were actually told that if we can, could work from home, that we should. So I had already packed up my, uh, my stuff and left the office with the intention of only going back in where absolutely necessary. The UK was still not in a full lockdown, though. that came a, a week later. So we had been told to stay home, protect the NHS and save lives a lot. And it occurred to me that actually I'm not the only person with all of these things flying around my head, concerns about my own family welfare. Um, and so instead, uh, I decided to save the academic in order to protect the student experience. And I was going to do that using LT. So I've, uh, as Marcus said, I've been using um, a whole range of AD instruments, uh, equipment um, and teaching software variations um, for, well, almost a decade now um, at Greenwich. And um, I was not new to LT, but what I did know um, and that LT had that I wasn't yet using in my teaching were case studies. The fantastic thing about the Brain Trust is that we get to speak to um, different academics across the world um, and we can share positive experiences, uh, frustrations, etc., with our with our teaching and how an LT can solve that. And I've been hearing a lot about how case studies were really useful um, for, for, for nursing students and felt that this was going to be something that was really good in my teaching in the future. And of course, I was now having to write with Sarah um, and bringing her up to speed quite quickly on how to use this platform um, uh, to, to be able to deliver a lab just one week later that was going to be delivered solely online without us being uh, there to, to, to support students. So it was the first time that I'd really had to get my teeth into authoring. And the great thing about LT, the system, is that it's quite intuitive. So if you've, if you've used a computer before, if you've prepared a PowerPoint slide, um, pretty much uh, you, can, you can author without too, too many concerns. So you can change existing content, and that's what was really important. So these case studies are there, wonderful um, bits of information, videos that are available, um, etc. So we managed to cobble all of this together, put this into a package um, with a lot of the background information that these foundation year students would need um, to, to be able to access this um, uh, sort of more applied pharmacology. So how are the drugs used to treat disease? Um, and uh, it, it worked wonderfully. The students um, engaged with this. We were very surprised that so many students engaged with it, but, um, but also gave really great feedback. Um, of course, AD Instruments response in the pandemic was wonderful. They made a lot of this content available um, to us, but also the speed at which um, people like Charlotte were getting back to me. Um, and of course, Tom, as always, whether I had, if I had any questions, uh, was, was really, really welcomed in what was an incredibly stressful time. Um, we don't uh, have uh, LT integrated into our virtual learning environment, so we use Moodle, um, but it's quite easy for us to enrol students. And again, that's also really helpful when we're dealing with lots of students very, very quickly, and there's lots of other things to be considered. So that was the first solution uh, to, the, to the most immediate threat, if you like, uh, that was caused by the pandemic to our teaching. And then summer hits, um, we're, we're looking at boards, so we're making sure that the students can progress, we're thinking about how we're going to deliver things next year, and um, I'm really dedicating a lot of my time to planning um, how we're going to deliver 
uh, the the lab content, the practical content for one and a half thousand students across four levels. So from our foundation year students right through to masters, <clears throat> given that we now have to operate um, at least well, at two meters uh, with people being two meters away from each other. And so I've come up with the idea to use the sports hall um, because it has a roof. Initially, I wanted a marquee, but it's pointed out to me that we uh, it may well get wet in the UK. So we had um, we, we had the sports hall and of course this delivery took an awful lot of coordinating and uh, negotiating with different partners and players etc so this took an awful lot of the summer and the bbc picked this up and we're now up for a national award for this but how are we going to prepare students for this um and we may well have to use this and adopt this in the future and something that we're thinking about using lt for is to prepare students so that they can engage with the labs before they come in um, and to understand um, some of the biochemical assays Doing this meant that the students, this was for our foundation and first year students could be in this lab and they could be separated from each other, freeing up our more specialist labs that could be used for more advanced levels and they could be um, uh, undertaken safely with two metres between the students. And then September hits. So I've had a big summer of concerned students and all sorts of uh, issues to deal with. Uh, and my now term one teaching is upon me. Now I'm single handedly responsible for the second year physiology lab, so I deliver them myself um, and uh, I teach most of the physiology module. All of our teaching is still online, so our lecturing is still online, um, but we do have the option of bringing students uh, onto campus for practicals at this point um, in Kent, um, because there was the, it was different across the UK. This is happening all from the second week of September, so it has to happen quickly and I need to make a decision very quickly. Um, all of my lectures um, that are delivered uh, need to be recorded, pre-recorded, and all need to be given captions, which cause no end of headache. And I'm sure um, other colleagues um, from the UK will share similar frustrations and stories. But I'm considering how on earth can I provide physiology labs? Now, the picture here in the background of the screen is um, of our largest teaching laboratory. This can um, typically hold around about 40 students um, comfortably and we have 10 physiology kits. Now with two meters plus, that um, uh, capacity was really reduced to about 25%. So we could only really have 10 students in here at once, which meant one student per kit. Now anyone that's undertaken the, the practicals um, uh, that, that are run by ADI that we, that we, that we uh, usually take with physiology, know that actually you need a, a human subject, you need someone to be controlling things and reading things, so we, we typically don't run these unless we have at least three students. We're also being told from the government that we need to uh, wash our hands, um, cover our faces and protect our space, so this two metre idea again is, is now in place. And with physiology labs, and these are photos of my students from a few years ago now, this is not how you can run physiology labs um, like this. And I, if, if any of my colleagues managed to run physiology labs safely, I'd love to hear how you did it. But we couldn't come up with a, with a viable solution um, that could allow us to, to kind of keep to these key, um, key criteria. So what did we do? Well, we turned back to, um, to LT, which we would have normally used with these students anyway, but we'd use model data. Now, it's not the first time that I've used model data within LT. We've used this before with our students um, who, for whatever reason, can't, um, can't come to the lab. Um, and they have to have uh, serious reasons. We don't just give the data to them, if you like. Um, but what I really love about this, uh, this solution was that I was now more confident with authoring. I normally ran four labs um, and repeated each lab four times uh, to get all of our students through these labs. And um, I decided that what I would do is condense uh, just down to two labs. So we would put a lot of information in uh, to two different sections and the students could work through the labs um, as they as they kind of wished in their own time. We did a lab on uh, respiratory um, physiology and also one on cardiophysiology, cardiac physiology. And I'm confident now to author these these labs, but I'm doing so at speed. And I did make some mistakes, um, but it's easily um, corrected, should we say, in LT. And that's the great thing about this. Um, of course, I can pull across the existing content. Um, and what I really love about model data is that it is representative and not perfect. So you can see an example in the background here that actually this is a, a real recorded um, uh, 
physiological signal, but it doesn't have this beautiful flat line that you might see in a textbook. It's got noise in there, it's got wobbly bits, it's, it's very representative of normal data. And so students actually can see what they may have seen were they in the lab. There were videos available from ADI for the um, sort of, uh, setup of equipment so they can see how the equipment would have been uh, used had the students been in there. Um, and the great thing is because I'm not there to guide them, <clears throat> the system is intuitive for students to use. So I didn't need to be there telling them how to move through different sections, how to navigate, it's very intuitive. And then the final great thing for me was the fact that because my marking had gone from group work to individual submissions, it had quadrupled. And so um, I was um, fortunate or clever enough, shall we say, to be able to use the automark feature um, that, that comes with LT. So students could get a really comprehensive um, lab session with lots of background information provided to them they could work through in their own time uh, and I was supported because I could mark and I could have the confidence that the students would be able to navigate through it. Uh, so feedback, uh, this is kind of an assessment of actually um, how good really was this, did, did we thrive um, using, using LT um, and at the end of every, uh, every kind of module the students are asked to give their feedback on, the, on what's happening. And usually we get really great feedback, really great comments on Kura Cloud um, in the physiology um, uh, module. So we can see here on the left hand side, uh, the students um, said that the Kura Cloud practicals um, practical were really fun to work through as a different way of completing practicals. So they, they actually enjoyed it um, and the students were, our students were fantastic. They recognised what we were up against and why we couldn't deliver these practicals safely to them. And they also mentioned my dog, who may, may make an appearance at some point. Um, we also said that, as another student said, that, um, that what I was teaching them in the classroom really connected to what was being um, supported and reinforced with the LT labs. So the students could see the application in the labs or the lab work that they undertook online, the practicals that they followed online was, was feeding from the content, the kind of more theoretical stuff that I was teaching them um, in the online videos. We had some slightly negative feedback, so the students are also asked um, uh, how, could, how could we improve the module, um, and one student uh, said that actually they would really like to use case studies in physiology. One of my colleagues that I um, twisted her arm uh, to come and teach for me on the module used a case study and the students loved that, and of course we can do that now and LT can allow us to do that in our teaching and uh, it's certainly something that we're thinking about incorporating from, uh, from September. Um, but one student did say, understandably, the virtual labs had to be used, um, but they found it um, difficult to use and couldn't grasp the concepts of the practicals well as if they could have done if they were in person. And I think I agree with that student. Um, <clears throat> the point of the practicals are, in physiology at least, is always to engage the students with the content. And it's wonderful to see their faces light up when they can see their own, um, their own ECG that's being recorded in real time and displayed in real time. And I think that's, that's the, the thing that's really missing that the students can't super connect with um, when, they're, when they're not physically handling uh, the equipment and recording these things. Um, my, my thoughts uh, are in grey there, um, so the, the group work aspect is obviously missing and students really do yeah, enjoy that group work um, aspect. Um, it isn't, hasn't been, their understanding hasn't been as well embedded in terms of what they're talking to me through in their coursework. So LT often supports other coursework and scenario based assessments, I've just got a couple more minutes. Um, and I think that that was lacking because the students couldn't engage with it um, in person. Um, they did like the case studies, so the students that were from the first group, they, they felt that it's more tangible, so they, we had some great uh, feedback there, um, and they didn't think it was as fun as doing it um, uh, online as, as in person. So what am I going to do next year? This is my final slide. So um, I'm part of a university working group looking at digital technologies and teaching, and LT is certainly something that I'm going to be um, talking to them about. Um, so I was shortlisted for, for uh, an award in innovations um, in teaching um, for another piece of software that, we, that we've been using and this one will certainly be um, hopefully shared across the different faculties. And we're also redeveloping our foundation year um, and my colleague Sarah has, has grown um, and I'm really pleased to see the way that she's come on uh, over the last year and she's going to be completely overhauling for that foundation year uh, and wants to use LT um, in, in, in the delivery of the labs. Our largest programme, Biomedical Science, will also have uh, more case studies embedded within it. And of course, now we're in a position to be able to, to develop staff um, to use the digital technology. Staff are more ready to, to learn. 
And then finally, um, I'm really interested to see where uh, LT sensors can take us. So if we do have to continue social distancing or maybe go into further lockdowns, it might be possible for us to, to send uh, some of these sensors out to students that they can actually perform the experiments uh, on themselves at home or if students are having to isolate. So that was a whistle stop tour um, of, of, of how LT um, saved me and my, uh, my HE teaching experience last year. Uh, and I'm very happy to take any questions. Fantastic, thanks uh, Abby. Please do, uh, if you've got any questions, please do type them into the Q&A or if you wanna raise your hand, we can, we can unmute you temporarily to, uh, to address any questions you might have. I was going to ask one 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 non ADI question, which was, what was the, the fantastic uh, subtitling software that you've got running at the bottom? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know that. Sure. Um, that's uh, that's just a PowerPoint um, a PowerPoint. Uh, Thing. So that comes built in with it. Uh, sorry, I didn't realise that was still on. Yeah, they, that's part of the um, the teaching uh, things that I learned this year for recording lectures. Question here from Rian. Just uh, just wondered how you might use LT when students return to the lab. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So we use uh, we already use LT in our teaching uh, normally. So um, the students uh, complete the, the laboratory um, exercises that are building with LT. They record their data was in the lab using a power lab, and then they can go away in their groups or they can stay depending on how much time that's allocated left in the lab. They can answer questions, and then from there they can submit the work to me, and I can mark it or have it auto marked if certain questions um, allow for that. Um, and the students always really give great feedback to it. The thing I particularly like about LT is not that it's just, it's, it's very, it's clean, it's, as I said, it's very intuitive for both staff and students to use, um, but there's a lot of background information um, that students can, uh, can, can draw from uh, if they're not sure. So they, they can go away and they can look up things, but sometimes, and I find this very often, they've looked at um, a, a dodgy website uh, that's not perhaps given a, a very good definition of something, whereas the, the definitions within ADI have obviously been scrutinised and um, adapted over the years as well. So we know that what, what the students are looking up on, on, um, on the ADI kind of keynote boxes um, is correct. Thanks, Abby. Um, just one in the chat from Amy, just asking if there was anything that you would have integrated looking back to make the virtual environment more engaging, uh, what would you have done? Just thinking about the student comment. Yeah, no, that's that's a really important, um, important one. We did, what we did later on is we kind of had a bit more time to think about it. For our project students, we held live um, sessions from the laboratory. So we had a member of staff in the laboratory um, talking the students through what they were doing. And had I had more time, I probably would have gone to the laboratory and live streamed me um, recording something, uh, so whether it was my ECG, etc. And um, so I certainly think that students, if students can feel it and watch it and see it, um, I, I could feel it in that case, but that certainly makes it a bit more engaging for them. And it, we got fantastic feedback from the students for doing that for projects. So I definitely record me doing some of the things because I'm a, a person that they see and that they know. Um, yeah. Thanks. And uh, one from Darren at Bradford, just uh, asking, how do you intend to use the case studies? Are these embedded into the lab session or in some pre-lab activity? Um, I think we'd probably not use the case studies in the lab. I think what we would do is we'd use them um, for so we've got this concept called flip learning, flip classrooms. So where we would give the students information and outside, and then we would use the, the contact time and live contact time to discuss the case studies. And so I think that's how I that's how I see um, us using these in the future, rather than almost a, as an assessment attached to it with questions. We would actually discuss the case studies um, in person. Fantastic, thank you. And I think there's one last one in the chat uh just wondering whether you can automate a short answer questions um unfortunately not at the moment that would just be restricted to the kind of multi-choice questions and the label image questions so it's challenging to kind of uh automatically detect and determine what someone's written in a short answer question box 